me share my screen. Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to our Best Art Regional Meeting for the month of April. If you would please uh, sign in, my colleague Stephanie has provided the sign in link that is in our chat box. We want to make sure we capture your, your information. So please go ahead and sign in. If you need a language translation, just check the globe that's at the bottom of your screen. If you need Spanish to English or English to Spanish, it is available to you this morning. Tracy, I'm gonna turn this over to you right now. Certainly, um, and also um, we need to have Brittany set up as a translator. So if we could do that and make her the uh, Oh, I did that already. He was but, kicked out. Oh, she was kicked out, okay. Give me one, one moment. Oh, yeah, so, so uh, we are gonna be doing a, a new, uh, when we send out our e-blast, which is probably how you all are here right now, you're gonna receive a PDF in the form of an attachment. And so this might be new and it might be a little bit confusing in the beginning, but it's, it's to streamline our process. And I actually did just check it out right now and it worked fine. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna see this PDF. It's gonna have a link in the, um, the title of the attachment. You go to the URL, which is the UTTPS down below. And again, there's an AM and a PM, and then um, you click on it and it takes you to the meeting. And so again, that's how we're gonna be sending them out. And it works really streamlessly. And um, if you're having any problems, let us know, because like I said, I did just check it out right now and it works. Again, you're gonna get that PDF. You're gonna open it up. You're gonna click onto that URL and it's gonna take you to the meeting of the AM. And then on the right, you see the PM. And so um, it's, it's something we're trying new and it's gonna be more streamlined so that you can get into the meetings. And, um, and that way you can share that, those links. And we are gonna be uh, starting a new link beginning in May where it's gonna be one link for the rest of the year. And so again, uh, we hope that that will be uh, stream, uh, seamless for you and um, so happy you could join us today. This is our agenda for this morning. If you would take a, a, a look at it, we have an awesome upcoming um, presentation. Um, we are going to acknowledge um, our new LNC. So before we get started, let me do this. I wanna welcome our new attendees. If you're new to our Best Start regional meeting, welcome. Give a shout out, wave your hand and your little emoji. And we wanna say thank you for joining us. We are so excited that you are here. Also, we wanna welcome our new LNC, AVPH. We are super, super excited to welcome AVPH as one of our partners. And uh, we are looking forward to working with them and they are such a benefit to the community. And we're really excited that they are here with our AV Best Start. This is um, Child Abuse Awareness Month. So I wanted to, uh, our team wanted to share with you just a brief introduction and something that speaks to child abuse prevention. And then we're going to go forward with our presenters this morning, Dr. Doug and Donna Gaddis. Just one moment, please. You need to share the sound, uh, Darrell. Children and families reach their full potential. Policies and services that put families first strengthen all of us. Grow a better tomorrow for all children together. Visit www.preventchildabuse.org. Hashtag growing better together. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for that. And just one moment.
I'm gonna turn this over to Sylvia Scott to introduce our speakers for today. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here today. We're very excited. We have some phenomenal speakers with us today and, um, and their experience and expertise that they bring to the Antelope Valley. Um, we're very grateful for that. First, I'd like to introduce Dr. Douglas Corrigan, who has served as a clinical supervisor for the Children's Center of the Antelope Valley for nine years. He earned a doctorate in education from Argosa University after serving in the US Air Force for 21 years. In addition to his work at Children's Center of the Antelope Valley, he provides therapy through a private practice and has taught at multiple institutions of higher education, including Chapman, University of Phoenix, Saracosa University, or Community College, excuse me, and Brandman University. With us today is also Donna Gaddis. Uh, Donna Gaddis' involvement in the Children's Center began in 2001. Since then, she has served as a volunteer, as a board member, interim executive director, and in her current role as compliance officer for the past 12 years. She draws from more than 35 years of experience in healthcare, accounting and administration, and has been a member of the Palmdale Regional Medical Center Board of Directors for 24 years. Donna earned a bachelor's in business degree in accounting from Pace University in New York City. Again, help me welcome our two distinguished guests who will be presenting for us today. Thank you for being here. Welcome. I am turning this over. Morning, everyone. This is Donna Gaddis. Thank you so much for having us today. That little intro YouTube is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Um, April is Child Abuse Prevention Month here at CCAV. Every day is Child Prevention Day. But during April, we like to put some special emphasis on what we can do as a community to protect our children. Next slide, please. So we know the dire statistics. Um, we know that the Antelope Valley has had a lot of negative publicity regarding their child abuse stats. It's most interesting for this group today, the zero to five that the child's age for half of all substantiated cases um, that's pretty scary, and that's why Best Start exists, and that's why your group is so important to helping us prevent child abuse. Next slide. So child abuse is something that you may not realize has a lifelong effect on children and the community. Children that are abused have higher incidence of physical health problems, mental health problems, substance abuse, high-risk behaviors, crime, and dropping out of school. So it may seem that this only affects the family that's being abused, but it does not. It actually affects the health of the entire community. Next slide. So, what we do at the Children's Center is we don't judge, we don't categorize anybody that they are going to abuse their children, but we do know that there are certain elements in life that make you more likely to abuse children. And some of those are parents were abused as a child, the family and parent is under crisis and stress, including of course now COVID-19, unemployment and job issues, poverty and the stress that comes with that, isolation, another thing that unfortunately we've seen heavily during COVID-19, and inadequate parenting skills. And that might not be because you want to be a bad parent. That might be because you might know, not know how to properly parent to avoid child abuse. Next slide. So what do we do at the Children's Center and how do we go about our work? Most of you know us for our treatment program. For 34 years, we have been providing quality treatment for children who have been abused or experienced a crisis. 
And this is any type of trauma or any type of abuse, including sexual, mental, emotional, children that are suicidal, children that have witnessed domestic violence. Um, I know many of you are aware of some of the more horrific cases, those children and their family and their schoolmates have to get treated as well. But for us, the guiding principles are so important because in the world of child abuse, bad things can happen to good people. Um, as they said in my bio, I've been involved with the Children's Center since 2001. And I'd like to take a moment to share a story about how you can understand either being on a committee like Best Start or working at the Children's Center, that child abuse can happen to even the best people. I was actually had two small daughters at the time, getting them ready to come to the Children's Center to volunteer and bringing them with me, because of course, that's what you do. You take your children with you wherever you go when they're that age. And my older daughter, who's going to be 29 next week, actually was the kind that would, you'd put her clothes on and then they would take them off. Has anybody ever had one of those? So I finally, the only thing I could really get it aware were those Oshkosh overalls because she couldn't take them off. Well, you're trying to get both kids done and you get one done and then the other one's taking their clothes off and you're back and forth and you're, you're actually just all frazzled and you leave the house. So I get to the Children's Center and I'm meeting with some of the board members who I really didn't know very well at that point. And I just went, huh. I can understand why people abuse their children. And they looked at me like, oh my gosh, what is this crazy lady doing here? She's gonna volunteer for us. And the point of it is, is that even with good support and a supportive husband, things can happen. You can reach that breaking point. And here at the Children's Center, we do not want you to be here after the breaking point has occurred. We want you to be here before the breaking point has occurred when you need a support system when you need some parenting skills when you need to just get that little extra help to keep you from taking that next step and to keep you from losing it and i i know that seems very simple but we understand that many people in the antelope valley because of how remote we are do not necessarily have a family support system up here or a friend support system so perhaps you may need your best start community or you may need activities at the Children's Center to become a support system for you before that crisis has happened. We would much rather do our work here preventing crisis than treating crisis. Next slide. So what do we call this? Here we call it breaking the cycle of trauma. And we do this through so many different programs that address all ages and all situations. Um, as we indicated, although we don't say that any particular group will abuse their children, we do know some of the groups that might. So for example, you'll see, as we talked, clinical therapy means they very likely have an open DCFS case where there's already been a crisis. Relative support services, Many of you know that there are a lot of grandparents in the Antelope Valley raising their grandchildren. We have support for that. Domestic violence support. It's highly likely that if you've experienced domestic violence, there will also be child abuse in your own. So we have domestic violence programs. We do. Transitional age youth is 16 to 25, aging out of foster care or not having a lot of good adult support. That group, especially the young parents, very likely haven't had good parenting themselves and are more likely to abuse their children. And then we do reentry. That's for our justice involved community. It should come as no shock that 95% of the people that are in jail were abused as children. And 50% of those coming out of jail are coming home to a family with children. And we want to give them all the skills and all the support necessary to break that cycle of trauma. And then we do connect. What is that about? We do connect has a lot to do with COVID recovery. Although certain people have had the rest of the traumas, we have all had the trauma of dealing with COVID and what that has looked like 
from isolation, social isolation, academic issues, financial issues, housing insecurity. So We Do Connect allows us to encompass everybody else that has experienced COVID-19 the last couple of years and needs some support to get their family back on track. Next step. Next slide. So by focusing on the children, we are so blessed here at the Children's Center to have an incredible uh, team of clinical supervisors, clinical therapists, clinical interns, and clinical students because we are a training institution. And all of this combination is how we treat and how we prevent child abuse. We actually can't get into the home and actually know and say, please don't hit your children. But what we can do is we can provide skills. So Dr. Doug Corrigan is one of our clinical supervisors. He is our EBP, evidence-based practice supervisor. And I'm gonna introduce him and he's gonna walk you through today some of the skills that we teach our clients and the community. So next slide and welcome Dr. Doug. All right, thank you, Donna, and good morning, everybody. Thank you for letting me join your group and talk about some of the things that we do here. So first off, the six protective factors, these, these are developed by the Department of Health and Human Services through the CDC and prevention. Um, and they are identified as things to uh, help identify families that can be at risk and also help us understand the kinds of things to help families reduce that risk. So for instance, nurturing and parenting is um, when families have strong, warm feelings um, towards their children and within the families, which builds that trust that children need to develop. And all of these things develop and go across through adulthood. Um, the knowledge of parenting and child development, that's where you have positive communication. Parents learn how to listen and are consistent in how they work with their children. Uh, and, and that develops children to become successful and independent, uh, motivated. Uh, parental resilience, you know, we want the parents to be flexible uh, to be able to bounce back from stressors or crises because life events happen. And the children through their parents modeling that resilience, they start developing their own resilience. Uh, social connections. So social support networks are extremely important for healthy lives. And we work with the families to build healthy social support networks. And that helps the children also develop their own friendships to be able to make and maintain friendships to increase um, their communication skills. Uh, then concrete supports for parents, like later on, you're gonna hear about all of support services. You know, that's an, an example of great support for parents and some of the things that Donna was talking about, like the relative support service, when you have extended family members caring for children. Those community support uh, agencies are so helpful to help the parents, which helps the children, and the children learn skills on how to self-manage their stress, and it decreases the uh, probability of neglect to happen to the children. And then the, the sixth one, social and emotional development. Um, that's where the parents are modeling positive communication and their own self-regulation, which helps the children develop their own um, self-regulation skills and, and being able to uh, express their own emotions in healthy, appropriate ways. Next slide, please. So the effects on the pandemic. So you'll see two different columns here. One says research and the other says educators list. So the research is based on uh, journal articles, peer reviewed research that's done. Um, so it's, it's research based. So those factors are things that are found that were found to be uh, difficulties during the, the, the heart of the COVID pandemic, um, such as greater stress. So there's nothing really um, outstanding on theirs is really what we've been hearing through different media sources. Uh, and then the second list, that's, those are things that are not 
through peer-reviewed research. That is anecdotal information. The peer-reviewed information on the effects, the after effects of the pandemic on children, that'll probably come out in another one, two, maybe even three years because it's going to be post COVID pandemic research. So right now, the, the great source of information is really coming from teachers. What teachers are seeing from children as they're returning to the schools and they're running into a host of problems with these kids who are who were isolated at home for a long period of time. And they're having trouble with those self-regulations. They're having trouble with the communication. Going back to those, uh, the risk factors, it's some of those same things that children had trouble developing during that, that, that period of isolation at home, not being able to get out and, and run around and play with friends and develop those, those friendships and be involved in school activities. So the teachers are finding that some of these kids are really struggling. Next slide, please. So we at the Children's Center definitely wanna be solution focused. And we look at things, thank you. We look at things from the perspective of what is going to help these families, not, not, not just the child, what's going to help the family in total because it is a community kind of thing. You know, if you, if you think of it from the perspective of a system approach, it's more than just a child. It's the child, the siblings, the family, the school, the entire community. So one of the programs we have is called Parent-Child Interaction Therapy. This is a heavily research-based approach of providing treatment to the child. And we are trained through UC Davis. They're, they're really the, the spearhead of training for parent-child interaction therapy. It's also called PCIT. So it's, it is an evidence-based practice. There's hundreds of research studies done on it to prove the effectiveness. And these are kids who do have some kind of mental health disorder, such as a trauma disorder, an anxiety disorder, a disruptive behavior disorder. So they have some kind of serious problem going on where it's impairing their, their functioning in the community. It's about 22 weeks. Uh, and one of the things that, that we do with the parents is we expect them to practice the skills between sessions. And the more they practice, the faster they get through it. Uh, it is for ages two to seven. Uh, I happen to be someone who can train other therapists in it. We have another person who can train other therapists. So we have the sustainability. And an interesting thing about the PCIT is that it's done in a, a very specialized room with special equipment. It's actually two rooms, one room with a two-way two mirror uh, into the other room. So the therapist is sitting behind the mirror with a headset on talking to the caregiver through an earpiece, providing them coaching on working with the kill, the kiddo, because this is a team approach. We are a team because one of the things I tell the parents is I can get any kid to behave for an hour. But what's going to happen the other 167 hours of the week? We want to transfer those skills to the caregiver so that they're working with the child throughout the week. And so we'll talk more about what those skills are in a moment, but the nice thing is that it is a team approach. The caregivers are developing those skills. They are translating from the office into the home and you see amazing results. I'll give you an example. I was working with this one child. She was four years old. She would curse up a storm. She, she had some, now you heard in my bio that I was in the military for 21 years. She could totally keep up with anybody else in the military. I'm cursed. She was off the hook. And she, when she first came in, um, her parents were divorced. She had a stepmom. And we worked not just with the child and one of the parents. We got all three parents involved. So mom, stepmom, dad, all involved in the treatment for this child, all learning the skills so that this kid is getting that consistency between both homes and all three parents involved in her life. And it, it took her much longer than 22 weeks. Okay, She was a tough one. She took about 30 weeks. And after about 30 weeks, she started kindergarten, first month there, student of the month. So 
the skills work when the parents use them. And you'll see this picture of these two guys, Daniel and Abel. They are adopted children. The parents had older children and decided to give back to the community. They adopted one. And about a year later, they adopted the second, but the second one was so disruptive. They couldn't do any community outing. They couldn't go do family functions together. And so he was brought in, went through the PCIT program. Again, that team environment, working with the mom and the child. And after about three months, four months, they were back out doing family things, going to the park without any problems at all. So when the, the material is applied and the parents learn it and use it with the kids, we see transformations. Next slide, please. So PC care is very, very similar to the parent-child interaction therapy. PC care, however, is designed to be a much more rapid preventative approach, very focused on prevention. There's no diagnosis required. This is where there might be some maybe disruptions in the household, some, some stressors, but the child doesn't really have disruptive behavior, no trauma, um, no anxieties, but the parents want some help. They need some help with something. And so this is designed for ages two to 10, and we have it set up for being free to 50 families. It is eight sessions. They come in, they do an assessment. They have six very specific skill building sessions, and then a one month break to tie it all together without the therapist involved. And then they come back for a final follow-up. And at that follow-up, if they need further help, then we get them that further help. Um, what we found so far is that uh, of the families we've worked with, only one has needed follow-up assistance. But it is very prevention-focused, skill building, and the skills are very similar to the parent-child interaction therapy. Next slide, please. Oh, and I want to give a, a shout out to Costco, Kaiser Permanente for putting together the grant on this because they are the ones who are funding it and Bart's Altadonna for supporting us. And so, um, you know, I definitely want to give credit to them for making this program work. All right, so let's do a little practice demonstration. Darrell. Yes, I am here. All right, beautiful. Thank you for volunteering, Darrell. No problem, Dr. <laughs> okay, do you have um, some object that you can hold up for us? All right, beautiful. All right, I see you're holding that pen. Yes. All right, thank you. So one of the first things that we do in both of these programs is we teach parents what are called pride skills. And the big three on the pride skills are reflections, which is basically repeating back their words, behavior descriptions, describing what they're doing, and labeled phrases. So Darrell, please hold up your pen again. I see you're holding up that pen. That's a behavior description. And behavior descriptions with these little guys helps them slow it down. Because you know, these little guys, they have a lot of energy. And I can only imagine the kind of struggles that teachers are going through, especially post-pandemic, where the kids are just balled up and those behavior descriptions help them slow it down. So behavior descriptions will help them self-regulate their activity level. So I really like the way, Darrell, that you are um, sitting there paying attention and listening. I really appreciate how you're staying so focused, just like I want you to do in school. That's a labeled praise. So we say label praise. We don't want it just to be a praise. Great job, Darrell. Okay, so I say that to great job, great job, and Darrell's like, okay, well, thank you. I don't know why I did a great job at, but thank you. Um, but if I say great job sitting there, paying attention, just like I want you to do in school, I'm also letting that child know what I like, what they're doing, that I want them to continue doing that behavior and where I want it to link to. I want you to do that in school too, not just here. And those labeled praises will encourage that positive behavior to continue outside. Uh, then the last one, reflection. So Darrell, what do you think of that pen? I think it's a cool pen. 
That's a cool pen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. That is a cool pen. So all we do is just reflect back their words. And you really want to use their words because it's letting the child know that they're important, that they're leading the communication, which helps them to express themselves, and it's building their vocabulary. So imagine if Darrell, instead of said pen, she said pencil, in that reflection, I would say, yeah, that's really a cool pen. So I would even do that correction without saying, no, that's not a pencil, that's a pen. I'm not doing it in a harsh manner. I'm doing it in a soft manner. So that's building their vocabulary and their, their ability to express themselves and encouraging them to express themselves. So those are some examples. And then the second phase is also commands because we want them to comply. So Darrell, uh, let's see. Please put the pen back on the table. Go ahead and do that. All right, so she complied. Thank you so much for putting that pen back on the table. Thank you for following directions just like I want you to do at school, okay? So we do the commands. You want them to be very direct. Notice I didn't ask her, can you please put that pen on the table? Because that offers the opportunity for a, a, an ordinary reply of, no, I don't wanna put it down. That's because that would be an appropriate response. As the parent, I'm giving a command. So I tell the parents, you know, families are not democracies. You have the parents and you got the kids. There is a difference. And the parents need to be in charge because the parents have all the responsibilities and they're paying all the bills. And they are raising these children to be successfully independent adults. So part of that is teaching them to comply with these commands. So this time, play with me, Darrell, don't follow my command. So Darrell, please pick up the pen. So then I would literally count one, two, three, four, five. I would count out loud. Darrell, you have two choices, either pick up the pen or go to timeout, or I would say some other consequence, or you're going to lose electronics for the day. Either pick up the pen or you will have no tablet for today. So I give her the choice. I'm the parent. I don't need to carry my child's burden. I'm giving Darrell the opportunity to make that choice. And then she either does or she doesn't. And if she doesn't, then I follow through on the consequence because it's that structure. Both of these programs are building structure and the keys to that structure are consistency, predictability and follow through. So I need to be consistent where I'm offering those two choices and I will follow up. So if I say you're going to lose your tablet, you don't pick up that pen, I got to follow through. So that the child knows in his or her predictability that if I say I'm going to do that, that child knows I'm going to do that. And that structure is really the critical piece. We don't want that to break down because that is where we find amazing success in helping to eliminate and improve on those six protective factors. So Darrell, thank you so much for playing along. I really appreciate that. Again, label praise, label praise. And thank you, everybody, for listening. I'm going to pass it back to Donna. Next slide. Thank you. So if you did just get a little bit of a sample of how we teach these pride skills, I assure you that every single person at the Children's Center, we all say we need these parenting skills. They are helpful to everyone, no matter what your circumstances. So today... The takeaway, how can you help prevent child abuse? What can you do? Well, number one, you can invite Dr. Doug and our incredible clinical team out to your meetings, out to your Girl Scout troop, out to your Head Start school, where they can actually demonstrate these type of skills with the children in real life. Um, number two, as you've learned from the little intro video that we saw, the pinwheel is the symbol of hope for child abuse prevention. And here at CCAV, we take that very seriously in the month of April. We all have lots of blue clothes. Blue is the color, pinwheel is the symbol. And next week we are actually planting our pinwheel garden. Next slide. If you'd like to get involved and help us finance some of the free activities that we're able to do to prevent child abuse, you can sponsor a pinwheel for $100.
You can visit a supporting restaurant or retailer during April. Follow us on Instagram. And I believe there's about 11 restaurants all throughout the Antelope Valley that are doing some kind of donation or special to give to us as a donation for Child Abuse Awareness Month. Become a corporate sponsor. If you're involved with a large company, we would love for you to become a sponsor and help us be an ambassador and spread the word. Get a DIY pinwheel kit. Each month as part of our activities, CCAV distributes thousands of DIY activity kits that everyone can do with their children as a bonding activity and a way to spend time together. And of course, this month, it's a DIY pinwheel kit. If you can't make it over to the Children's Center, you're welcome to email us. I'll put our information in the, in the chat. Or you can come see us at the Poppy Festival this weekend and practically every community event out there, you'll see our packets of DIY kits. Share on social media. Um, we're looking for those followers. The best way to get this word out to people who need us is by growing our social media and growing the message that here in the AV, we are here to prevent child abuse. And use that hashtag, AV. This is a mission, this is a goal. We couldn't do it without y'all. Next slide. And thank you so much for having us today. Again, together, we can hashtag AV. Let's put AV in the news for the positive work that we're doing up here as a community with all of these groups. So now if there's a moment, if anyone has any questions, we would be happy to take those. Okay, great. Thank you so much for having us today. Thank you so much, Donna. That was great information. Thank you, Dr. Kerrigan. Now you're teaching me how to deal with my three-year-old granddaughter. Okay, so. Um, before we move on, uh, I did want to take a moment to introduce to you our, our newest team members, our LNC from AVPH. Um, I want to introduce the, uh, Jack, Jessica, Flora, and Jackie, or yeah, Flora, Jackie, and Teresa. Can you come off mute for just a moment and tell us a little bit of what, what you're going to be doing with um, the Best Start team with outreach and engagement? Just introduce yourself. Thank you, Dorel. So yes, it's um, Teresa, Jessica, and I, Flora. Uh, we're um, part of doing like the outreach with Best Star. So we're super excited. We're getting out in the community, uh, encouraging uh, community members and family members to um, enjoy and attend uh, these meetings. So uh, we have so much enthusiasm. Um, We've been doing outreach for a while, so we are excited to uh, just partner and um, just meet everyone and um, enjoy this time together. Thank you. Jessica, would you like to say something? Yes, Good hi. Good hi. morning. Good morning. Um, thanks for having us. I'm so excited to be a part of the Best Start program. Um, I'm getting out there in the community and encouraging people to join the meetings as well. Awesome. And last but not least, Teresa from AVPH. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Teresa. I'm one of the associate directors here at AVPH. And I think Flora and Jessica pretty summed it up. We're pretty excited to um, help promote this group and see if we can help grow the attendance. Awesome. Awesome. We are so excited that you all are joining us. We, we, we've been talking about you all. It's like, wow, the, the best first date or something. I don't know. It's just been really exciting. So thank you so much and welcome to our AV Best Start. Next, I want to turn this over to Liliana from Olive Support Services. She has some um, uh, specific resources we wanted to highlight from Olive Support Services. So Liliana, go forward. Okay, thank you, Darrell. Yes. Okay, so let me screen share. Um, okay, so I will be uh, kind to our time. Um, so we are all of support services. Um, I know Donna Gaddis um, presented and we overlap because we are partners together on a lot of aspects. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so here at Olive Support Services, um, our mission is to support and empower individuals and families by leveraging available resources, training, um, the power of collaboration, diversity and respect for families and community resiliency. Our main bulk that we offer is um, court recognized classes. So CCAB is mainly preventative. We're more hands-on um, trying to bring together the family and trying to unify parents in custody. So we do parent education classes, we do anger management classes, and then all of these are at no cost or low cost. Um, we also offer the Relative Support Services, um, RSS uh, for short. And this is, um, like Donna had mentioned, uh, caregivers that are taking care of non-biological children, such as um, nephews, nieces, grandkids, all that stuff. Um, and we kind of help them navigate through that. We offer tutoring, we offer mentoring, financial literacy, um, college ready programs, um, enrichment programs. We also do field trips with them. We try to incorporate the family as much as possible. We also do home visits. We drop off art kits, um, anything to engage them and, and keep them un unified. All of our classes are virtual or hybrid, depending. Um, we do try to accommodate everybody that tries to attend these classes. Um, and then this is us with CCAV and all of our partners. So together we are CCAV, we do. Um, and together we're able to provide all of these services, uh, medical through Bart Saltadonna, tech and media training through Painted Brain Legal Services, through Neighborhood Legal Services, COVID Relief, um, CCAV is able to provide groceries, hot meals, hygiene supplies, um, spiritual support. Um, we also They also have community ambassadors, which gives um, all of our participants the opportunity to kind of have a case management relationship and help them navigate through the linkages and all that uh, resources that they need for their families. Um, what, qualify, what qualifications for free we do services? Um, I know Donna did touch base on this, but um, we're we are the, I forgot what it's called, but we are the re-entry program. So any adult that has been detained, arrested or released uh, from incarceration within a year or on parole or probation, um, we can provide all of these free services. And then we have another partnership through DCFS at Penny Lane, and we are able to provide free um, domestic classes. Um, for those that have an open DCFS case. And we do a lot of outreach. Um, so if you are um, part of the outreach community, um, I'm sure I've seen you in a lot of events. Um, we try to engage the community as much as possible and get all of the resources out there to make um, our community aware of what we can provide for them. Um, this is us in a couple events, the Unity 310 Revival at the bottom. Um, we have, I believe this was at Vineyard church we were doing something there and then this is the most recent one at the bottom right um this was a partnership between we do ccav and all of support services um we did kind of like a moving covid um relief type of event we had free vaccines covid testing free food there was trucks there was an in and out trucks so everybody enjoyed everybody was dancing it was a really good event and then we also have Olive Services Group. Now this is um, another side of Olive Support Services. Um, this is a transitional living housing program for adult males. Um, if you or anyone knows of any adult male that is interested in looking for housing, um, we're here to assist them. We also have ongoing free COVID testing um, at uh, the old um, 
all of support services sites, which is 38442 20th Street East in Palmdale uh, every Monday and Tuesday. And I believe they're doing an incentive where you get a free $20 gift card. So for, every, for everyone and whoever gets um, COVID tested. We are also having another event on May 6th. Um, and I encourage anyone here that would like to attend um, is more than welcome. Um, you can shoot me an email or send me a chat. Um, it is open to the public um, and it's gonna be the in and out food truck again, other resources, kids, CCAB is gonna be there. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be exciting. And I would like to encourage all of you guys to support us, please, and follow us on social media. And if you have any participants that can benefit from any of these resources, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're always here to help. And thank you for your time. Awesome. That is such exciting news. Oh, my gosh. And I'm looking forward to that food truck event. I'll send thank you the flyers. Okay, thank you so much. You can stop sharing. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, a lot of things are happening in our community. I'm going to share my screen with you one more time. There you go. And so we have our AV Best Start updates and announcements. We have our AVPH Food Pantry um, that is taking place, and I believe the next one will be coming up May 13th. Those, these flyers, by the way, will be uh, sent out to you, so don't worry, you will get these flyers. We also have our Father's Insight. Um, if you're a father or a father-to-be, you might want to check this out. This is through Mama's Neighborhood. Um, it will take place on the week, uh, Wednesdays, weekends, um, from 6 to 7.30. So again, these flyers will be sent to you. And we have our Maravella Foundation Services, no-cost energy services. This will come in handy for... Um, participants or residents in our community that are in need of extra assistance. I'm going to turn this over to Tracy LaMonica to talk about what we are doing with our AB Best Start and our programs. Tracy? Hello, everyone. So yeah, we have a, a couple of workshops and trainings going on. This is our really popular diversity, inclusion, and equity. Um, you might have seen these flyers. They've been shared with uh, by DMH, Natalie and Denise have shared them. Uh, also, if you've been attending the CES meeting, so these these have been making the rounds and we've got about 440 people signed up for all of them. Um, they are meeting twice a month and the workshop schedule is on the flyer. And again, as Darrell mentioned, all of these flyers will be sent to you. And if any of them are of an interest, the next ones are coming up in May. The Eventbrite link is embedded at the bottom of it, so no problem there. This is our literacy workshop. It actually just started this Tuesday. It's actually going to be on Saturday as well. So there's three more coming up. It's Flex Financial, the um, Spending Spiral, and um, the Tax Toolbox. So these are coming up. They are meeting on the Tuesday and Saturdays, and this is actually our first time trying the Saturday. So if, if that's of an interest to you, they are meeting this Saturday, uh, the Financial Flex Family Edition. So that is for the family. Uh, and again, all of these links are embedded onto the flyer. And finally, our Child Abuse Prevention Speaker Series. We do also uh, record as we are today. We record all of our events. So if they're of an interest, if you've missed them, you want to see what we talked about or what it was about, you can go to our, um, our YouTube channel and uh, my colleague Stephanie has our link tree, which has all of our links. So you can actually use that link to go to our Facebook, our Instagram. So this is our Child Abuse Prevention Speaker Series. And it actually just met yesterday. Uh, we had a really great speaker, Shenandoah Chafalo. She spoke about a survivor's guide to long-term impacts of trauma in our community. This is on our um, YouTube channel. 
uh, posted yesterday. So if that's of an interest, that happened yesterday. We finally have Corey Best next uh, Wednesday. He's a dynamic speaker and he's going to talk about the me versus, uh, you know, the community. So we're really excited to have him. So again, these flyers will go out to you. They are uh, the Eventbrite embedded in there. So hope to see you. And again, if you've missed any of them, check out our YouTube channel. One last one, we have our Unity for Youth that's taking place this Saturday as well. If you're interested or know any young people that are interested, make sure you get this information. It will be uh, 9th Street East in Palmdale, 38626, 9th Street East, and the contact information is listed below. Well, we also have in the chat um, from Yanira, Project Joy will be hosting a vaccine clinic on the 26th of April and offering groceries, uh, vans, shoes for the first 50 families. Awesome, awesome. Um, also, we have, we honor you, a program that will be taking place by um, the Honorable Services Career that want to highlight and honor our veterans. So uh, that is taking place April 30th, next Saturday. Um, if you know any veterans that might be interested in that and, or participating, that is also being made available. Okay. I believe one more. Yeah. Uh-oh. So let me stop sharing. Um, are there any more announcements that we did not mention? If you have something that you would like to share with the uh, share with us right now, please feel free to do so. And Darrell, I do think we need to go back to our um, presentation because we do have some upcoming events that we need to mention. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Give me one moment, and we will do so. And also I did want to mention if any of these are of an interest to you along that you'll be getting these flyers, we share a lot of these flyers, a lot of resources on our Facebook, uh, Stephanie Mann's our Facebook. So if you do have flyers that you yourself, your organization is wanting to uh, get out the word, send those to us. Um, you can use the Best Start AV. Uh, Stephanie can also put her email in the chat. We'd love to share those with, uh, like I said, we have our Facebook and our um, Instagram. So we want to get the word out. We want to take the village. So, you know, the AV is small but mighty. So uh, we're here to help each other. That's right. And last but not least, I believe uh, Tracy, mm -hmm. you mentioned these, but again, our upcoming events and meetings the financial literacy, April 23rd, CAPS, child abuse prevention speakers, our AV Best Start regional meeting will take place May 19th. Ah, Tracy, you wanna talk about this one? Sure, I was about to say, you guys have to come on down. We're gonna be at the Poppy Festival. It's actually starting tomorrow. Uh, we're super excited. I'm sure you're all aware we haven't had the Poppy Festival for two years. So it's back. It's actually at the fairgrounds this year. No, no longer at George Lane. So keep that in mind. It's at the fairgrounds, but we're going to be we're going to be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we're going to have lots of swag. We're going to have our, our wheel of fun. So come on down and join us. And I'm sure it's going to be great. I know I've I've heard the buzz that there's a lot of um, vendors that are going to be there. So hope you can uh, hope you can come by, stop by, and say hi to us, and and maybe win some swag. Best start swag. Our next um, Antelope Valley Regional Meeting will again take place May 19th. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate seeing you. And this is how you can connect with us. Um, our best start at allforkids.org. You can scan the bar and you will pull up our link tree and find all kinds of ways to connect with your Best Start AV team. Thank you so much for joining us again. Um, I'm so glad that you chose to spend some time your morning with our AV Best Start team. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day.